isn't it? Yes. Today on Get a Lab, we're talking about establishing ground zero. <clears throat> Whether you're starting out or you've been around creating content like me, you'll need a home base to return to when you feel overwhelmed or you're transitioning into new territory. No matter what, what you're doing is going to take emotional, mental, and spiritual stamina to continue living and working in your purpose. So, here's five things I would do to establish a solid home base. More on that in three, two, one. Plato said, know thyself. It's not always easy, but it is necessary. This is Get in the Lab. Welcome back to the lab. My name is Megan. Hey, my name is Jenna. You're not going to go with Dropout Joe? I was thinking about that. Oh, I want to also change the E. and I'm just going to put J-O. Oh, make a sense. I make a sense. Okay. I will be known as Joe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I run small personal experiments and gain big life personal goals, and then I tell you about it. So thank you for being here with me today. Uh, we're lucky to have you spending at least 30 minutes with us. Uh, here in the lab. So today we're going to talk about establishing ground zero. This is something that I've been thinking about as I'm transitioning into a new space in my business. You're starting right. out and yep. it's a really good idea for you to establish ground zero, to have mm -hmm. a home base is what I call it, to come back to because mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of shit that's going to go down and you need to have somewhere that's within you, like mentally, emotionally, spiritually, we can go, okay. I know this is all crazy right now outside, but I'm going to come back and yeah. like get myself straight. Yeah. yeah. So like you have to get in the practice of that. Otherwise, if you don't have that like awareness, which we're going to talk about, self-awareness being one of those things, mm -hmm. um, it you, you go a little bit crazy. Oh, yeah. You feel like you're you're carrying this huge burden by yourself and then you feel really disorganized not only just like within what you're trying to think about but also like it just affects your life yeah it's very demotivating yeah, right yeah definitely so we're going to talk about that establishing ground zero but first uh something that uh we're going to change it up a bit for the next three weeks i want to thank uh the people who have been leaving reviews on itunes uh, and I said that earlier in a, uh, another video that I was going to be giving away extra t-shirts that I had just kind of lying around from uh, my last workshop. So, mm -hmm. um, sorry, they're, <clears throat> they're kind of, well, I only have like two size small and one size medium. So yeah. like if I call your name, we're going to pull your name out of a, out of a hat right here. Yeah. Um, and, and just randomly pick somebody. But first let's say thank you to, uh, an iTunes reviewer. Close your eyes and pick one. Okay. <laughs> okay well, that's cool I actually like was right on top of it one review truly talents and going places by kindlepreneur this video podcast is epic there are many podcasts out there but not too many that have the hardness the power of video feed <laughs> plus Megan is a natural and is covering some pretty cool stuff can't wait to tune in for future episodes as well as her previous information cool man cool Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Kindlepreneur. I really appreciate it. Dave, thank you. <laughs> das is better too. Das. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, you guys can start, uh, you can keep leaving reviews in iTunes if you want to grab a free t-shirt. Again, we only have size medium and size small. Y'all can make some crop tops up in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It really inspires me to keep creating the content that I do because I do everything. And to hear that, makes makes my day and makes it kind of worth it. I, I create the content that I create and I put the quality out that I create uh, because I really enjoy it. But the fact that you guys enjoy it too, that mm. means a lot. Let's go ahead and pull a random name from the hat. We've got all the names that we that of the people who left reviews in this hat right here. Give me a drum so. roll, please. Okay. Who it? Who did it be? Today we have it's upside down. We got Chev D80. Chev D80. All yep. right, man. Chev D80, thank you for leaving a review in iTunes. I super appreciate it. Um, we have 
a size small and a size medium, hit me up on Twitter at Megan J Photo so you can claim your t-shirt. PM me, I'll send it to you. So we're not putting your, your address on blast or anything. Um, and oh yeah, it has to be if you live in the United States only, okay? If you live outside of the United States, sorry, I don't okay. do that shit. All right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Even though I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, contact me on Twitter at Megan J Photo and I'll give you your free t-shirt. Okay, I'll ship it to you. Now that we've taken care of that, yep. uh, let's move on to the next segment before we get into you know helping you out uh i want to update you guys on the niche site yeah (laughs) i want to update you guys on the niche site that i've been building on the side um i wrote down some notes here i've just submitted an article to tech.co uh with the help of my friend dave chesson and hopefully like that goes through um i've learned a couple of new things like what anchor text is and what branded anchor text is so anchor text say if you're writing a a guest post right And the, the whole reason why you're writing guest posts is so that you can uh, provide value to that audience, right? But yeah. most of all, you you want some kind of link juice or a link back to your site, right? Yeah, driving traffic. Driving traffic, exactly. So how you do that, besides just putting your link in your bio, uh, what Dave has taught me is that you can research, Google keyword research, mm-hmm. a certain type of anchor text. So say I write an article on, uh, like I did vlogging, I wrote an article on vlogging. Mm -hmm. And so vlogging, actually, that keyword term, if I look that up and say Google keyword, um, AdWords, research tool, whatever, uh, that word vlogging has a really good search volume. It's like 1,300 search volume. That's pretty good for me. And then the competition was low. So I was like, cool, that's a good keyword uh, to target as my anchor text to link ah. back to my site, right? Mm. So you highlight that, you hyperlink it, and that links back to uh, yes. a, a relatable article, say, on your site about vlogging that talks about it further, you know? And ah. so that's called anchor text. Nice. That's yeah. Really oh, that's cool. how to use anchor text. Okay. Usually, some people will go, uh, I talked about vlogging here, and then they highlight here and then link back to, to some article, right? Yeah, but that's not really that smart. Because be here cool. is not a keyword yeah, that you're targeting. Yeah, it's going to be the actual word. Right. Hence right. the anchor. So that's anchor text used correctly. Mm-hmm. And then if you, if you say you want to do something like to learn more about vlogging, um, you can visit, you know, so-and-so site on five ways My to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you can uh, actually brand of that anchor text and you can actually say like www dot say get in the lab on me or something like that right Right? so that's branded anchor text and you never want to use two at the same time you want to choose one or the other uh specific to the context of that article right what do you prefer um i like just the anchor text where i i search for a uh a targeted keyword, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I highlight that one and use that yeah. as an anchor text. I like I think that works has more versatility and mm-hmm. it doesn't look like an automatic like, like going to another right site. There. Yeah. It's so, more like, okay, let me fish more into this. Yeah. But I don't yeah. I don't know if there's really that much difference like as far i mean because people know like okay this is going to link out somewhere so i mean whatever but i don't know it just looks better to me Mm -hmm. so that's what i've learned and other great news um so far for the for the month of august up until the 14th of this month uh i've made another 25 dollars totaling in 50 bucks in passive income in (laughs) in affiliate in affiliate sales uh through amazon affiliates and so that's pretty cool, and it's crazy because the percentage of making money from these affiliate programs is pretty low. It's like 4%. As you keep, like I said, as you keep making sales, that will start to increase to like 6 to 8, and I think maybe it tops out at 8 or 10 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've generated like at least $2,000 in sales for Amazon. But then I only get like $50 in that's my affiliate true. sale. But I mean, that's fine. I mean, it's like, so, hey, you're getting something, yeah. right? For making a video uh, and and placing it on YouTube for free, Yeah, you know, essentially. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. But you could see the drastic, the numbers, the numbers seeing the numbers is... Uh, a little bit crazy. Is like, you know, yeah. So, But it's still really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so um, before we move on to the last segment, which, you know, you inspired 
this episode. Uh, let's take a break and hear a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of physical books? Is that you, Lord? Maybe you need a digital book. A digital book? Yes! Why don't you read from Audible? Why, yes! You can visit audibletrial.com slash get in the lab to get a free audiobook of your choice. They have over a hundred thousand titles to choose from. That's right, you can turn all of your physical books into digital ones and listen to them, I hear, at two times speed. So, just remember, go to audibletrial.com slash get in the lab to get your free audiobook today. All right, we're back from our break, and uh, that was fun, making yeah. a little little skit out of that. I think it's cool, like, people have sponsors, right, and it's not an official, like, I think it's it's a lot easier to get, a, like, a sponsor from, from Audible and stuff like that, but um, if you can make it fun, and if you can make it uh, entertaining, then I think it's a lot better than just hearing the typical... Like, what's the to audible.com for sponsoring this? Yeah, episode. I mean, it's boring. Like, it's boring for me as the creator to say that shit. Yeah. So, like, if we can make it fun every time, then I'll feel uh, Real good. even better about putting <laughs> putting it in the show, you know, because it just is like, ah, uh, audible. Because then you're like, if you're thinking like, da, 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 and you're going through the words, then you're probably like, you guys are going to probably think like she's going through the words. Yeah, like, yeah. She doesn't believe in it. And I love Audible and I want you guys to, to feel that when, I'm, when yes. I'm, you know, using that. So, all right, cool. So let's talk about establishing ground zero for you as a content creator, you know, trying to put out shit online and trying to establish your thing, your message, your podcast, right? You show you get it out. Yeah. So um, you posed a question to me and you said, what would you do differently? Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, like, you and you and I, we're going to have really completely different journeys because our goals yeah. are different, right? Uh, at the same time, like, I think the mentality, like we talked about, the mentality, the, the emotion that kind of comes and goes and up and down and roller coaster and even yeah. even the spirituality of what it takes to weather the ups and downs of uh, what this journey of what this is yeah. like i can't even really put a label on it because i'm not like uh consistently churning out certain results because it's mm. such an experiment it's all over and yeah because i didn't have the, this kind of what we're going to do today and what I've been doing for myself uh, recently since I've come back from podcast movement is establishing ground zero, mm-hmm. having a home base. Uh, like we, you know, we just shot a, a local Lab Rats episode with Jeff uh, yep. Koga and he was talking about knowing your numbers, mm-hmm. right? Knowing the worst, your worst case scenario. So like if you, if you know that shit and you know everything there is to know about you and where you're going and you have clarity, that's your home base. Yeah. That's ground zero, right? Mm-hmm. So like the fact that you don't know that or maybe you're, you're new and you're like, well, I have to figure out what that is. Um, just having that knowledge of like, okay, I need to figure out what my base is. Yeah. I've already been through some shit. So now I can be like, okay, okay. so what does that mean for my base, mm-hmm. for my ground zero? Mm-hmm. And you're establishing it right now. So the big differences between you and I will be like, well, I have spent a little bit of time doing this thing. So I'm going to know maybe technically some things. But I think we can be pretty much on the same level as preparing our mind and our heart our spirit, whatever, our body for the work that's going to come. Yeah. Right? Okay. So platforms and stuff, you asked me about platforms. We'll get into that. Like what platform should I focus on? We'll get into that. I think that's kind of easy to answer. I guess like we can answer that right now. Why not? Which is like you asked me what platforms to focus on and you're asking me specifically like Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, whatever. Even like when we got onto other platforms like for the actual website, like WordPress, etc. Okay. Uh, we were getting into that as well. Okay. So let's, we'll address these technical things because these are, I think, easier, more concrete answers. And then we can kind of get into like the more, more self dev stuff. One. Yeah. The more intangible things. Mm-hmm. Okay. So platforms to focus on, like if I was your in a position, I would still choose, like if you're choose, let's talk about websites. Yeah. I would still choose uh, WordPress. 
over but like, right like i told you yesterday i said i like to control a lot, a lot of, of stuff like and then a i was little, yeah. yeah that's true because okay. like and also they're um thinking of getting like two jobs and everything so it's like okay well i need something where if i need help i can still get help from say so website and it would be a little bit easier for me to control things place things everywhere and until probably later on when I really want to have a hand in absolutely everything and I can control all the details and I know I can put forth all the time um, yep. dedicated to it, then yeah, definitely yep. probably go for that one. Okay. So basically you've decided to go with a site that's drag and drop like, like Weebly. Yeah. Right? So what I advise to do is because uh, I think every... Um, every brand that decides to take their business seriously usually is using sort of a, a WordPress site or something that is more of an investment. Mm. Okay. So right now you're using a free platform. Yep. And at some point, at some point you will upgrade that if you are serious about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I read something kind of funny, like on, on a Facebook group or something like that. And somebody said, this podcasting hobby is expensive. And I was thinking, I read that. I was thinking Absolutely. like, it's interesting attitude because the fact that, you know, no matter what the amount is, um, anything that is like, really worth it to worth it you. to you yeah you're gonna Personally, pay you're gonna do whatever you can for right it. you're gonna do what you what what it takes yeah. right and the fact that you don't take your own show seriously mm -hmm. and you treat it as a hobby like as an expense yeah well yeah you can treat it as an expense but like you treat it as a serious expense or you treat it as like oh i have to do that mm -hmm. you know there's there's the different attitude so like the fact that you don't believe in your stuff to pay for it that's like somebody paying for saying they're saying they're a batman fan but they don't want to buy the memorabilia or yeah. you know they don't want to purchase or invest into those things that would make somebody like a, oh my god! A Batman fan, yeah. you know, a collector who was like, even though it's a hobby, hobby, right? Yeah, they still, still take like, it seriously. Yeah. So I would, I just thought that was interesting. So it's, it's that mentality of, of, like your like belief how, in your own shit. Yeah. Like, how much do you really want it? Yeah. Do you want this? Are you or? sure this is for you? Kind of <laughs> like thing. don't, and then don't complain about spending money if you don't. Uh, or don't complain about success or getting listeners or mm -hmm. uh, not being able to build a platform if you're not willing to do those things, mm -hmm. right? It's like your podcasting is a big deal now. Yeah. It, it kind of always was. The fact that some people have like, what it is that? That's not serious. Mm -hmm. Like, um, it's disrespectful to the people in the industry because they work very hard in what they Incredibly do, right? Hard. So like, Definitely. The, fact, the fact that somebody goes... I, like, this is, this is expensive. Like, and, like, this hobby is expensive, you know? And I'm sure that person didn't mean that. But um, it, it goes to show you how subtle things are in, in as, as terms of, like, are you willing to invest in what you're doing? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So And also, like, remembering that there still is audience there. Yeah. You know? Like, you're putting out a product. Yeah. And you can't, like, if you put out a shit product. And you don't then, believe it. And you, <laughs> that you don't believe in it, like... So why, why are you here? Yeah. Why are you here? You know, yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. So, uh, that's just something that was just something that kind of came into my mind. But like, uh, as far as, um, I, I got off topic, but like, you're going to be on Weebly. I just want you to back all that stuff up. Yeah. Cause there's no way to migrate to certain things very easily when you don't save yourself backup. So mm -hmm. if you're writing blog posts, if you have like, um, your, you know, all your podcast like, yeah. episodes, just have yeah. it saved backed up, yeah backed up everything. in an external or something so it's ready yeah. to go if you decide to migrate and who knows though they'll, they'll probably come up with some kind of like migration service um possibly yeah but, but definitely we'll go do that saves I know, you yeah. a headache though if you back yeah. it up for yourself like i i did that and it didn't work out so um <laughs> as far as like social platforms to market your stuff on mm -hmm. like, honestly um i did it and a talk when we were at podcast movements mm -hmm. is talking about uh creating like personal facebook groups mm -hmm. and i actually didn't like that idea that's fine you know yeah. like the thing is 
uh, we're like eight years apart, right? So yeah. your your demographic, which is 20, 21, 22, 23, like that. Probably actually, getting out of high school. Actually, 18 to 21, yeah. right? That's the demographic right there. They're super into Snapchat, right? Yeah, that's like actually... Snapchat, something. Tumblr, mm-hmm. right? That sort of thing. So you do it's you the, and your demo, yeah. right? At the same time, you also have to think about where your audience, your potential audience is going to be. So... I wouldn't write off Facebook and Facebook groups. Just know that there are a lot of options out there. Mm -hmm. But you really are, like, really active on Snapchat, which is, like, crazy powerful right now. Mm -hmm. So, like, use that. Yeah. Like, focus on your strengths that you have right now. There's no need to, like, try to grab everything. If you've got Snapchat really strong right now and Insta really strong right now, like... Mm -hmm use Go it with those yeah roll with those and then know that like later on if i do want to keep expanding more onto it yeah or when i would like to then just go ahead and try out everything yeah else. i mean because it's hard for me to like give you advice on platforms on where to market your shit because platforms are always going to change yeah right like There's with the times coming out too so what i it's better for this show and for my purposes, too, that this is a self-dev show, mm. that we focus on what what you can always control. You can't always control the platforms that are coming out yeah, and all that stuff. But you can control how you react mm. and how you take in situations and how you're going to uh, move and execute, right? Mm. Or not move and execute and be neutral and kind of, like, listen. So mm. let's get into that stuff. Let's get into, the, like, the intangibles because I think... Uh, that's where our cores that's where our show's core is at I think the biggest thing is to have the acceptance the awareness like uh, Jeff mentioned it yesterday mm-hmm. when you start a business with with, uh, with it, when anybody starts a business the odds are against you yeah you will fail you know he said that in our mm-hmm. in our interview and like you have to be cool with that <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's pretty cool actually like even referring to the book that I'm uh, reading yeah anyone can do it yeah um, they have like a specific quote. I actually sent it out on the newsletter, but it was uh, the Honda guy or the Toyota guy. He was saying like, it's going to be like 99% failure, but you'll still have that one. <laughs> I was like, yeah. See the one, they go 99% fail, right? Because mm-hmm. they only see right there. When they yeah. fail, they only see that. But actually it's like, yes, you will fail, but there's this little bit at the end of that, this little extra bit, the tail that everybody forgets about, mm-hmm. which is like you you turn around the definition of what failure means for you in that in that time because mm-hmm. there's going to be many of them, and then you learn from it. And now it's not the end of the road. Now yes. there's more road Gross. to go. You go, oh, there's more road here. Yeah. I thought it was the end of the road. There's actually more road over there. Mm-hmm. And then you go, you <laughs> step over there and you're like, Oh, <laughs> and you then, just learned something. Yeah, and like if you can calm your ass down because you're freaking out when you're at the end of the road, right? Yeah. You start your your vision starts to get short sighted. Yeah, and you're not rational either. You start mm-hmm. going like, oh, I'm gonna crazy. I'm gonna cut the show off. I don't yeah. want to talk to anybody. I'm not gonna do podcast movement. That's yeah. what I did, right? Because mm-hmm. I wasn't having that awareness of like. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Like, calm down. There's still much more. It's just right now. It's just, you know, you just are are too overwhelmed at this point. Yeah. Right? You took on too much or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a, a myriad of factors that kind of get in the way. But then you, if you calm down and just let things kind of like settle down, mm-hmm. you go like, oh. And then you like, and then you like just step over this little like speed Puddle. bump. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> yeah, you're like, just kidding. Embarrassing. So um, I think just knowing that, having mm-hmm. that awareness that every time that you're, because you'll, you'll start to recognize it too once you get into the practice of it. You're like, I'm reaching a like, weird, weird space level. that I can't tell what's happening. But yeah. I know that there's still going to be more after it mm-hmm. kind of thing. Definitely. Yeah. So like when you... You'll, you'll start to recognize it and you go, okay, now that I have like that awareness, I'm going to now come back home. Mm-hmm. Where's my ground zero, right? Mm-hmm. So ground zero for me is always, 
again, like Jeff was saying, is like, I'm always investing in my real education. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm always reading and I'm always listening, Mm -hmm. always watching, watching Mm -hmm. more than anything. A lot of things that are, uh, that inspire me. Yeah. Right. And it, it's not usually the sources of those inspiration are not usually within my my niche within our world of podcasting mm-hmm. all the people that we normally deal with i look for inspiration outside that more unconventional unconventional like sources of inspiration yeah so i really encourage like a lot of people to do that because then it doesn't sound like the same thing mm-hmm. Right. You it inspires different creativity, it inspires mm-hmm. you to put out your message differently mm-hmm. that nobody's heard of in your niche. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's something that I would always be doing. Like if I was in your place, that's something I continue to do when I feel like burnt out. I don't have any more ideas. It's definitely like reaching from different yeah. places. Yeah. And it really does inspire like some of the greatest ideas that maybe you can come up with Mm. um like for example actually a lot of my editing uh that i've been doing that's just from watching like random youtube videos and this could be like from pewdiepie to claire marshall who's like makeup or it can actually be from someone else like yeah so it's pretty cool yeah honestly so yeah that's what i'm doing all the time is just it is always investing and like learning to listen mm-hmm. you know i think that's uh instead of always putting out content which has been my bad habit before where it's like it was a little crazy <laughs> yeah it was a little crazy because i just you know uh spilling out content you true know? but it's not a bad thing at the same time because eh, it was i think that's my journey you know yeah you know i had to do that mm-hmm. so Uh, Another thing that I encourage you to do is right now for you specifically, something that I would do in your position that I didn't do for two years was I didn't make friends in the space that I was in. Mm -hmm. So like this is why private Facebook groups are so important. Okay. Because it's expected that people are on the same level already. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important for you to engage in these groups. That's the like... Besides Facebook ads that are very uh, effective that that I hear, I don't really use them, Mm -hmm. uh, the Facebook groups, okay? Okay. So this is the playground. Like, a lot of it is online. A lot of it is online interaction Mm -hmm. and leaving comments because people... Who, who are on these platforms, on any platform, they want to feel like they're being heard. Mm-hmm. And it's really important that you acknowledge that. And then uh, you do the same thing. You also contribute good shit, good messages, mm-hmm. useful information. You're, get, you're getting into the comments of other people who are asking questions, right? So you're offering something of value, and that's what it is. It's a community. But if you are just there as a lurker and maybe you always take, maybe you never, uh, you ask yeah. questions, but you never get into the comments and never answer anything, like, uh, it's just like in real life, <laughs> you know, gonna like- you're going to be outcast, <laughs> you know, so it, it's, it's a very human thing that you have to do, but it's, mm-hmm. it, it may be weird because you're going from in person to online. A little bit, actually. I'm very... I'm much more used to, even like now, uh, I don't really hang out with many people, um, but I'm much more comfortable personally when it comes to like even video versus audio, in person versus online. And you need to do that. You need to find friends that are your age or not your age, but like, uh, because that doesn't always happen, but on your same level, right? It's people that you gel with. Mm-hmm. And uh, you only do that by, you know, showing your own vulnerability and your willingness to engage and to help, mm-hmm. right? So that's something I would work on, like, right away. Okay. Because then it's crazy. That's why the interviews are so cool, because you're going to get to know this person. Yeah. Right? I'm really excited, actually. But this person doesn't probably podcast, doesn't yeah. understand this world. Mm-hmm. That's why you need people that understand this, this world, world who who are uh, not necessarily my friend as well, Mm -hmm. right? You need to create your own network Mm -hmm. because then you're going to have more power over what's going to happen in your thing, Mm -hmm. right? So I think that's that's super important right now for you to be doing is to make friends in the space. Mm -hmm. Like go out there. Like, Like I told you on the show, 
I remember I was like, I had no friends in the space. So I created a picture. I said, hi, my yeah. name is Megan, right? Like, it was, it was kind of embarrassing because it's like, well, I have to start somewhere. Like, I have no idea. Nobody answered except one person, but we're still friends to this day, mm. right? And yeah. that connection led to so many other little things or just the confidence in just going, hi, hi. my name's Megan. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about video, mm-hmm. right? Like, simple as that. You don't know who's who's also doing stuff like, like you do or maybe gels with you. Uh, who lives here? And you could, like, meet in person. Okay, right cool. on. Okay, so uh, another thing, number three, is to dream bigger. This is something I didn't do uh, back in the day. I And I still do this, and I think it's a habit of mine, is that I dream very safe. I only want this, right? And that's mm-hmm. fine. Like, it's it's good to have modest goals is because I justify it as being, like, I'm being realistic. Like, you right? know that it's going to be attainable. But of. then now I question myself and I say, am I being realistic or am I being scared? Because Mm -hmm. if I dream, because this has been my habit actually since I was a kid. If I dream too big um, and I'm not able to perform, uh, then it's, it hurts more. You know, it's disappointing or like, I don't want to get my hopes up. Okay. There's a little bit of that going in there. So like, why not? Dream big. Why not dream big? Like, why can't you have... Uh, this and this and this and this. And there's so many. I think there's so many uh, things that I still need to explore within that uh, that topic. But the ability to dream bigger, to have scary dreams, mm. like, you like I have a, I have an issue with that. Like I say, like oh, I only want to make five hundred dollars a month. Like when I think about that in real, like, and I'd be really really brutal with myself. I'm like five hundred dollars a month, really? Come mm. on, like. If I if I were to break myself down and talk to myself, I would be like, why do you only want to make $500? That's nothing, mm-hmm. right? I would almost be like, already you can hear the anger in my voice because I'm like, do you not truly do believe you in what you're doing? What's wrong there? Mm-hmm. Like, and so I think that's something that you need to do and be, and be cool with, like to dream big. Then what steps for you yourself right now are you like slowly taking... To break yourself from that, like, from that hold of not being able to dream big or from being too scared or, as you say, is it, like, because you don't, like, truly believe in it? I think that's bullshit. I believe that you really do believe in what you're doing. Once again, coming back onto some comments from friends that really took and um, really care about you as well. And they notice it's, like, you're downplaying your talents Mm -hmm. type deal. I think... um... I think it's a switch. For me, it's a switch. It's like, uh, but it's a switch that I have to keep switching Switching. on. Uh, I think it's just a habit. Mm -hmm. I think I've had a passive uh, attitude about things, uh, about accolades, about accomplishments, about goals that goes all the way back to uh, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So like that uh, is just a habit that I'm carrying on. But I see it and it makes me angry and anger is good because I can go I can uh I can activate myself to now make action like anger is good that way so you transfer your energy from anger to that yeah okay so now it's more about Mm -hmm. I think it's that self-awareness that we talked about earlier like I go oh I see that Hmm, that's interesting I'm not mad at myself mind there yeah like just a constant reminder like you know what I can I can do or like this is this is what's happening this is possible this is there's, possible. There's no, it's not scary. Or, uh, no, you can't even say, like, it's not scary. Because even if it is anger or if it's fear that drives you, it's still that taking that energy and reminding yourself to push, like, no, it's possible. Like, I still, there's there's this weird, like, undercurrent, this weird habit within mm. me that, like, is content as well. And that's okay, too. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of at odds at being well, it's like... It's not making you go crazy. No. Like, at least it's like... It just okay. makes it interesting. Yeah. So I go, you know, it just makes me question and, and bring up my own self-awareness about what I'm doing mm-hmm. and the goals that I have set for myself. And so it's just like a nice checks and balances, mm-hmm. right? Because otherwise, who else is going to do that? Yeah. Right? Then so, why not... Sorry. But... Then why not when you say, like, you know how you get, when you say, like, oh, is it because I don't 
really believe in this, why not actually turn that right round and then say like, when that almost self-doubt comes in when you're setting these goals that are like 500 or something, why not turn that right round like, and when you're turning it on, you're saying, oh, I can set this goal. When when I'm setting those monetary goals, mm-hmm. like I, I'm just trying to be real with me, mm-hmm. right? So the fact that I set a goal at five hundred dollars a month, uh, passively, right? Um, I can very easily. I already know I can make very easily five hundred dollars a month doing other things, but I wanted to do it in this way. Yeah. So that was a general speaking of like, oh, you only want to make $500 a month and like not even think about the context of which how I was going to make that money. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was just general speaking. Like I oh, don't, yeah. I do truly believe in what I'm doing. Yeah. It just hasn't always been, I, I don't match I don't it. Like I have a habit of downplaying myself mm-hmm. in my speech, mm-hmm. right? But in my head, I'm like, I know what I am doing. Yeah. So it was just matching those things. The performance, like I said, this has been practice. Yeah. This is not natural. For me to be able to say what's going on in my head and in my heart and what I believe. It's definitely been like, it's been a step by step. Step by step by by step. By fall by step process. Yeah. So if you have a conversation with me in person, it's very different than when I'm speaking on stage Yeah. because I'm nervous. <laughs> so like that, yeah, that's my issue. I am working on that. I do believe in what I'm doing. Um, it's Hell just yeah. hasn't always been easy for me to perform, perform. that. Yeah. Right. To because really express it. Yeah. It, it has to put, it's catching up. Mm-hmm. It's catching up to what's in, what's inside. So like, yeah, I don't, I don't have any doubt in what I can do. Um, but it's, I guess, matching the performance, mm-hmm. matching what I'm putting out, the perception that I'm giving people. Right. And then slowly growing and saying like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. get bigger. Yeah. And and to be cool with that. So I think there's still a lot in there. I think what we just talked about was crazy all over the place. It but definitely like, <laughs> was. Um, but it needs to be said. Because like one day we're going to look back at this episode. Be and like, be like, you were all kinds of crazy messed up. But you figured that shit out. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. In general, right? Like we were mm-hmm. going deep. Like we were going under layers, layers, layers. Yeah. But. That's true. Like if you're dreaming safe because you're scared push that like recognize it and go okay you why are. am i scared right mm-hmm. it's okay to be scared it's okay to making like for me to say i'm gonna make 500 dollars first like i want to see right yeah. i have to kind of prove to myself mm-hmm. if i can make 500 dollars passively right through these like affiliate programs and stuff um but at least like locate it be yeah. aware of what it and is be that's like making you scared yeah and then from there you're like okay well there's that yeah this can happen. Yeah. Because I'm aware in myself, like, I need to see proof too, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I can't expect myself to go, very sad, homie, let's yeah. go. <laughs> but the fact that I create the content that I create, mm-hmm. like, I can dream. I think it's a reasonable dream. It's kind of scary too to be like, I can be number one in video podcasting. Yeah. Right? I think that's a reasonable, kind of scary, like dream and the fact that i'm saying that here makes me feel weird because i never say stuff like that Mm -hmm. i want to be number one you know (laughs) it makes me feel that i look a certain way yeah right so that's what i'm scared of those perception of of what people are thinking of me and like at the same time i go but how do people ever accomplish anything great is because they go I want to be number one, Mm -hmm. right? I'm going to be number one. I'm going to be number one. So that's the kind of like back and forth in my brain as to why that happens and how the things in my heart are not matching the things that are coming out of my my mouth, Mm -hmm. right? So we didn't say that very clearly, but that's what's going on. (laughs) Built in real deep life. All right, number four. We're barely on number four. Okay, this is going to be a long ass episode. I'm going to cut it up. So develop your own restart. Like I was talking to you guys about before, I had a little breakdown going from season two to season three. I didn't know there was going to be a season three. Mm -hmm. I was having a breakdown. Mm -hmm. So number one, when you're starting to get overwhelmed, or even like when you're just getting started, you can be overwhelmed and you're like, okay. (laughs) So 
<laughs> develop your own restart. Your own restart button. Would you say that, like, develop your own restart as in, like, a typical process you'd go about doing? Yeah. All yeah. right. I stopped nice. doing shit. Like, I stopped doing stuff that's, like, freaking me out. Mm-hmm. And I just take a break from it. A little hiatus. Yeah. Right on. Like a week. Mm-hmm. Like, I know myself, a week is enough. Yeah. Some people it's longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people it's shorter, right? But you have to know and be, sh- like, have standards and be strict with yourself. Yeah. To uphold those limitations for you. I'm going to take a break for a week. You keep that promise. Yeah. Right? And when you're saying that to yourself, the only one who's going to who's gonna monitor that is you. Yep. Right? So some people go, I'm going to take a break for a week. And then it's fucking like five weeks later, right? Yeah. Don't do that shit. Or like, they'll you say, really I'm going to take a break. And then they're like, it's, it's been a break a forever. <laughs> yeah. And it's been one day. And you're like, <laughs> I'm really bad at not taking enough time. So like, which is just, I mean, that's not to toot my home. Oh, I work, I work really hard. That's no, also like, a detriment mm-hmm. because if you don't have like time to breathe, yeah, to come back, come back. You're again. really doing yourself a disservice. Yeah, you know, oh, I gotta get in there. You're being, uh, you're you're creating a, a like a an uh, like anxiety within yourself. I know you become almost like a, a workaholic. Yeah, as I like to say, and I'm not down with that either. Yeah. So like. You have to mean what you say, mm-hmm. mean what you say when you say it, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, like, the, like have some standard and integrity for yourself when you're setting these, these boundaries for yourself mm-hmm. or unboundaries, you're taking the boundaries off. Like you need to rein it in. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Keep it clean. All right. <laughs> so uh, five. Yeah. Pay cool. attention to your personal brand. So... I was really bad at this in the beginning and even in the beginning of this year. So for a long time this went on. I wasn't I wasn't being very consistent about the person that I was putting out into this online world. I was putting out so many different images of me. Okay. This you is mean, confusing like, as shit. Yeah. I have mm-hmm. the tomboy version of me. I have the girly girl version of me. I have the too much makeup version of me. I have short hair version of me. I have <laughs> curly hair. Didn't comb my hair. Just woke up. All these kinds of versions of me. Okay. When you're first starting out, it's confusing. It's confusing mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. So. Just be recognizable. Pick your best version. Mm-hmm. Right? When you're putting stuff out to the world. Especially when you're doing video. Like you can't deny that this is a this is a visual meeting yeah. medium, and what you're putting out, what people see, matters. Mm-hmm. Okay, but so we'll recognize you for it too. Right. The fact that I take time to put my makeup on the way that I do now, or do my hair now, right? Yep. <laughs> That's like, <not> true. <laughs> I don't know why, but like I yeah, I'm lazy because I don't want to do my hair. It's like and it's, it's hot. It's hot. It, I mean. Any girl will tell you, okay? So, like, I didn't want to do that. And the fact that you don't want to do that for it's yourself. Gonna re- it's going to reflect. Yeah. And then people That's are... That's a mirror. Mm-hmm. So, people will see that. Freaking just woke up and try to put this shit on? Try to pass this off as a product? Mm-hmm. As a show? No. So that's something that I, I always hold a, a standard up to myself now, even though it gets difficult, right? Mm-hmm. So like even making beta videos every day, this challenge, mm-hmm. if I don't have my eyebrows done, if I don't have my eyes done or whatever, yeah. like I'm not putting out a video or I will wait and do it. Or you're like getting home from work and you're like... Right. <laughs> Let's take a break. Um, we were talking about personal branding, right? Uh, we we're on five, six now. Yeah. Six, Okay. Number six, um, I thought we said five earlier, but whatever. Bonus, six, um, (laughs) know your worth. So I recently, like, it feels like just after podcast movement. Feels like that. Feels like it. Feels like that, um, that I have just now (laughs) accepted what I am worth. That's crazy, bonkers retarded but that's my journey okay so i own that i'm gonna mm-hmm. own that wholly but um i would love for people who are starting out and right now if you've been in it for a long time or whatever and you're undercharging or if people have told you that you've been undercharging or whatever mm-hmm. like know your worth i think that's still something i personally don't think that's something that 
you would know right from the get-go in the beginning. Yeah, you won't. But definitely something that I will be learning. But going. besides money, right? You yeah. know, you know what it feels like to be respected and disrespected. Yeah. Right. And you know, you know, you know certain things in your gut, right? Mm -hmm. So, as you're meeting new people and you're interviewing people and what a blah, 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 yeah, you you can't forget about that mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, it's like basic human instinct, instinct, right? So the moment you feel that that, and, and this is something I was always good at ignoring. <laughs> How so? Uh, because I would, uh, I would let very many people who were close to me take advantage of me in, in very many ways. Like, so, uh, that'd be like emotionally, mentally, all these things. Mm -hmm. So like, um, and that was just because I had a very, very, very passive personality. Okay. Okay. I don't, I'm not necessarily worried about that with you. Uh, however, just because somebody is a name, just because somebody has a brand or whatever the fuck that they're, you know, oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you're just, still a human dealing with a human. Yeah. So whenever you come into any interaction with somebody else, that is just always going to be something that's, that's there. That's yeah. the foundation, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm very big on, you know, like that gut feeling that you mm -hmm. feel like. Do they respect you? Mm -hmm. Mannerism? Yeah. Are they going to take you seriously? Because I'm like... Uh, that was actually something that I would always be, uh, that I, especially when I first start thinking about even stepping into this, mm -hmm. was like, I'm 21 or I'm 20. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't now matter. I'm thinking about it. It's I'm human like, no, it's and human. Happen. Yeah. Right? So I don't give a fuck how old you are or whatever your brand is or blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. human and human. Mm -hmm. So that makes it so easy, right? Yeah. Simple. You, it's, you make it easy on yourself and be like, okay, this is, this is what it means to respect Mm -hmm. my fellow human being and then everything becomes very easy yeah right it's not that i'm coming up to people and i'm like hardcore judging everybody <laughs> thou shalt not disrespect me gandalf <laughs> thou shalt not pass i'm just saying uh you know you can't let people get away with dumb shit if you yes, know they if are. they if they have this brand on them like oh i'm trying to be cool or i'm this and that I like do all i don't this. give a fuck about that yeah. all right <laughs> we're two human beings so yeah. let's treat each other as two human, human beings. beings that's it damn right all right so those are my things you got a bonus one in there um mm. that's what i would do if i was in your place mm. um that's what I do to establish ground zero for, for anything that I do that translates into, you know, my relationships, into everything else. Uh, so, yeah. Right on. Yeah. I digs it. All right, cool. Okay, so that was episode number 11. I hope you guys enjoy that. Leave a like on this video if you did. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to become elaborate. What is that? This? <laughs> It's thumbs ups. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what are like, you doing? Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, like this video if you did. Subscribe to become a lab rat today. And uh, if you're listening in iTunes, I would really love your honest rate and review so I can keep improving the show. Uh, I really appreciate what you guys have to say and what you think. Um, good things. We had a list of six today about how to find your ground zero. I would love to hear your thoughts. What's your one thing that you do to find your ground zero when you're mm -hmm. overwhelmed or you're, maybe you're just starting out? How do you how do you approach things that are kind of crazy, hairy, and how do you keep your cool yeah. to remain doing uh, and living like doing. in your purpose? Right, that's what kind of, kind of what I call it, living in your purpose, because I feel like I found my purpose. Okay, so thanks so much, guys, for watching. I really appreciate you hanging out with us today, and we'll see you next time here on the lab. My name is Megan. And I'm Joe. Uh, once again, my name is Megan. And I'm Joe. We'll see you next time here on the lab. Bye.